Pegasus Community Board to come forward. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you for um, the opportunity to come and submit on behalf of the Burwood Pegasus Community Board. Um, first up, I would like to, like to thank Paul and Carolyn for um, acknowledging the East. Mm. Um, on behalf of Sarah and myself, we both looked at each other and, and, and at the same time we mouthed, that's nice. <laughs> it's good to feel not, um, not abandoned. Um, so the submission. On the whole, the Board agrees that the plan clearly sets out what is required to be done as the City faces the challenge of recovery and rebuild. Um, page 35 of the um, annual plan, um, we do feel that to date the consultation with residents in the flood management areas and information around that um, has been insuff insufficient. Um, we do re acknowledge that there's additional things happened with the, um, the stormwater team ta task force that um, came out that's been because of the recent flooding. Um, but we do feel in our ward as though um, areas South Shore, South Brighton, Avondale, Dellington and East Burwood um, are being a little bit neglected as far as the information that's being released to the community. Um, we're concerned about uh, the planned performance around flood water protection. Uh, four, four households per thousand in a 50 year rain event. That's somewhere around about 800 to 1,000 houses in the city in a 50 year rain event. We've had several of those this year and we haven't seen that sort of level of flooding. So. Um, it just raises concern that their um, methodology in understanding what happens in certain rain events is flawed um, within the annual plan, so i um, just like to highlight that. Um, regard to the uh, maintenance of waterways and their margins, um, we, we feel that 66% of customer, customer satisfaction is far too low, um, and, and we would like to say that most of our ward would be the 34% um, who are dissatisfied because in our ward we're, we're really un we're not happy with any of our waterway edges, and the maintenance that, that has been undertaken so far. We do realise it's a transitional stage, but um, we do feel that is room for improvement. Um, we do have in our submission that on the 1st of May we were meant to meet with council officers and SERA staff uh, regarding the South Shore spit. As the houses have been removed, so too have the retaining walls that have been protecting the end of the spit and with the recurring storms, those have been eroded. Um, so we'd just like to acknowledge that that's been, that meeting has been deferred, but we would like it to still go ahead. Uh, there is quite a concern about the ongoing erosion along there, and, and as that erosion continues, the risk to the remaining houses will only increase if we don't get on to that. We would like the current performance of wet weather overflow events to be recorded uh, in the annual plan, it wasn't um, for 2011-2012 and 2012-13. Um, we're aware that those figures are probably quite different due to earthquake, but they do need to be acknowledged. We think by not having them in, it's um, trying to just hide the reality from residents. As far as the roading network, page 41, we would like to ask that consideration be given to more transitional repairs. Um, a lot of the potholes are remaining for, for weeks and months often. Um, a little bit of gravel thrown in them or a bit of asphalt in them would be <coughs> of residents. Uh, it's quite a challenge to our vehicles, to ourselves, driving around in those conditions. We would like to see the um, resident satisfaction increase over time. At the moment it remains static in the plan. Uh, we, we think that there needs to be a commitment for improving of that service. Active travel. Um, the board is concerned about safety in the east. Shortly after the February quake, um, I remember hearing that we were told that on main footpath, main roads, um, pedestrian roads, that one side would be repaired so that at least people could get down it safely. Uh, this has not been the case, particularly, for example, Pages Road. On a, a motorised scooter um, with a pram, both sides are significantly buckled, um, potholed, significant trip hazards the whole way along. And we would like to see, particularly on main roads, that one side of the road, the footpath, has a permanent repair or a transitional repair to make them safe. 
Um, our ward has a high number of wheelchair users of, of young mothers with prams, with children trying to get to school because there's not a lot of least car ownership. So we feel that that is a high priority. The board is very satisfied with the level of festivals and events that are held in our ward and across the city, and we recognise the important role that those are playing in the psychosocial recovery and the community wellbeing. There's been a substantial opportunities in our ward to look at transitional and particularly around footpaths again, walking tracks. People need that chance to be able to get out and, and go for a walk in safety and um, we do think that that is a really priority. Um, our ward has repeatedly felt and has, it has been confirmed at times that levels of service have dropped in our ward due to the damage of the earthquakes. Uh, we, f we feel that this is unsatisfactory because of the quality of life for residents within the ward and we would like to see that addressed. Um, as far as um, democracy and governance, page 72, the board would like to see education around the awareness of what local government is, what it does, um, how the public can interact. We'd like to see that improved. We would like to see better liaison between um, civil uh, in, in the annual plan it stated, in the draft annual plan it stated that um, current performance of 17% of residents participating in C civil defence e meetings, um, to me in our ward of 56,000 people, that would be 10,000 people attending a civil defence meeting. That's not our reality, I don't recall seeing a civil defence meeting in the last few years, so I'm rather perturbed by that statistic. Um, and, and would like to know yeah, more about that, either, whether it's meant to happen, because it certainly isn't happening <laughs> based on our experience. The social health, we are concerned about the policies around mixing elderly with other residents in social housing and see that uh, we're just you know, generally we're, we're unhappy with that. Um, we are supportive of increasing the availability of council-operated social housing as soon as possible. The board would like to be kept informed and consulted with respect to preparation of stormwater management plans. To date, they feel like they're happening um, outside of our awareness. We're often being asked um, what's happening. It's a, it's a real concern in our community and we would like more information to the board and to the community. We would support the increase in publicity around Kiwi Able cards. Uh, we feel that they are underutilised or because they're not um, promoted um, to, to the full extent that they should be. So most most of our submission is around communicating, engaging, and engaging with the board and the ward, providing useful information. M much of the information in the annual plan is vague. It's hard to interpret missing. The general feeling in the ward is one of pragmatism. We know the rebuild will take time and we understand the financial position of the city. However, the ward does feel left behind in levels of service, transitional fixes to roads, footpaths, stop banks, etc. And addressing these would make a large difference to the quality of life and safety for many of the residents. Thank you. Maybe if I kick on, off on that, because I, I do totally get the psychological impact of living in that environment. So, um, but I guess if you're asking us to balance up, you know, expenditure on permanent repairs and then temporary repairs, mm -hmm. is there something a little bit more, like, cost effective that we could do in the temporary space so that it's not... Um, I mean, I, I'm yeah. totally hearing what you're saying, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. can we, in fact, perhaps look for... Um, resources outside of, you know, contractors that are being having to be pulled away from, you know, major infrastructure repair mm. work or building work, yeah. um, in order to address a temporary solution for yeah. an, an environmental impact. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it, so, it is a challenge. I mean, should we be looking at, you know, periodic detention workers? Should we we, we be looking at maybe community organisations would like to do some fundraising? Yeah. Uh, maybe Rotary. Or, I mean. Could we, yeah. you know, call upon the combined resources of the 
of, of not just the volunteer sector, but those that, that perhaps have um, a contribution to make in another way, yeah. um, to get the East looking as good as it could yeah. uh, while we then think, prepare for the big big repair job yeah. that has to go in there. Yeah. So, so there's two things I, I, I could um, just comment back on that. One would be that the, um, the volunteer sector seems to keep coming against red tape as far as traffic management plans and, oh, and things, and okay. that seems to be something that just stops a lot of... There's a lot of communities out there that would like to be involved in clean-up days and things, but um, there seems to be too much red tape around that. Um, my second thing is that I used to own a concrete curbing business, so I'm fairly familiar with roads and concrete and, and things, and I think that there is a lot more that the city could do as far as temporary fixes. Um, for example, where curbs have popped up by the earthquakes, you see it all over the place, they've pop, popped up by a foot, you know, the big trip hazard. It's just a matter of concrete saw, cut, cut, and put a bit of asphalt down. It can be done for probably a couple of hundred dollars. Uh, it it take, would take an hour for two guys. Um, so Rather than leaving it like that to wait for another three years until the entire stretch of road is mm. recurbed, I think there's a lot more that they can do. Um, gravel and potholes, it doesn't have to be tar seal. I mean, tar seal is obviously a better permanent solution, but just having a guy driving, especially after it rains, and just filling the potholes with gravel. I mean, I've seen potholes lately that, you know, they're this deep, mm. and they're a significant hazard. You're driving along and suddenly you see one, and you'd swerve quite significantly. You know, how there hasn't been more fatalities, um, I don't know. It, it really is something that, that a little bit of gravel would just make a huge difference. And you could, it's add, not, the, it's you could add the impact on the cost of getting cars repaired in the east yeah. to that as well. <laughs> exactly. um, I've got um, Tim, exactly. then Glenn, then Andrew. Just following on from the, you know, looking at our budget and cost savings, etc. You mentioned that the um, on South, was it South Shore where the, the houses are being removed, they're also removing the retaining walls? Yes, that's correct. So the retaining walls are on the, the, the um, estuary frontage, is that yes. true? Yes. So, I mean, it seems kind of moronic in a sense that you would, because we're talking about something that's going to have to come back and be fixed, so they're actually removing a house and removing a retaining wall on a beachfront, technically, are two totally different things. Yeah, and I think it's... it's it, it, the, there's history there, I think, that people, when they built their houses, nothing was provided, so they built their own protection. Yeah. Um, so it, therefore it's sort of part of the asset of the house. Um, who, but it's who, Sierra that is doing it, it's red zone property. So Sierra so contractors Sierra, are actually removing... Sierra are removing... I think that's kind of a, a, a really important for our contract managers to get onto that mm. and just really have a look at that, because that yeah. could cost us a fortune. Well, yeah. they're, they're basically all gone now. I think that whole... Oh. Uh, Dave, Dave probably knows it a wee bit better than I do, but I think most of that South Shore spit has had all its protection removed. And, um, we, we, we will follow up on that, yeah. because, yeah. I mean, there's also links with the residential red zone, which yeah. Yeah. Um, we wish to co-op to our stormwater and flood management that's program good. as quickly Thank as you possible. Thank Glenn. Thank you. Thank you. If I may ask a question of staff... From this, um, um, the acting no. Well, no, we're not going to. I've oh. already asked if we could do that, but it's okay. it's going to hold up. We've got we've got the community okay. board here. They've got one minute fifty six left. Mm -hmm. Can you please just direct a question? Okay. All right. It's, but but I've make a, a note of an issue that you want followed yeah, up with sure. staff because yeah, I've, I've, got I've written offers. several so far. Yeah. Okay. From a, a Dellington Scouts and a local church group, which we've done clean up days before, wanting to clean up. Now, can we get them cleaning up? the Dudley Creek portion of the Burwood Pegasus Ward. Is that, what would red tape would we run into? That's why I wanted to, mm. no, no, no. Yeah, does the, that work? No, 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 we can't ask questions of staff now. Okay, but we've but done we that before. But we will pick up okay. the questions, right. yeah. I'll just, just um, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew, for your um, submission. Um, I just wanted to um, pick up on one thing um, in your 3.4 in the submission, the neighbourhood walking circuits. Um, and I'm interested in whether there's some quick wins here, because clearly your ward is one where recreational opportunities have, have been lost, and it seems that there could easily be some quick wins here. Um, are there areas that you've got in mind where we could achieve um, a neighbourhood walking recreational opportunity through maybe just placing some signs? Or are there areas where you think there's work that community groups could be doing to realise these, um, these walking tracks without too much involvement from council other than just in an enabling role? Yeah, I think... Um, I don't really get out walking much, but I know Linda Stewart um, does, does a lot of walking. She has a, a route that she's worked out that she could probably provide to you guys around an, an option for um, an area of Parklands, a walking track that could be fairly easily reinstated. Uh, I think it was partly there before the quakes, but it's been, parts of it are damaged and unusable. 
There's also a group in um, in the east who are looking at sponsoring rubbish bins to put around um, the stop banks to improve their use as transitional walkways uh, for, for pet owners and, and runners and, and things. But um, the, again, they, they do need a little bit of maintenance. I don't think they need... It's not construction, it's just a bit of maintenance to get them usable. That's great. Look, thank yeah. you very much. I really appreciate um, your time. I know everyone does. So yep. um, you've brought um, some really good positive ideas about what we could do um, that aren't going to be a cost on the, on the budget as such, but actually might build a bit of community yeah. um, spirit back out there at the same time. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Now, could I invite uh, Spokes Canterbury, um, Keith